the Nigerian economy. Just calibrate it for me because we have just a few minutes okay. to talk about some of these things that we want to talk about. What are your views right now? Uh, I, I would say the, um, the economy itself, um, if you underline the economy, it's strong, it's resilient. But we are not doing what we need to do to let it take off. So the economy um, has shown signs that it is growing. But the things we need to do to actually let it take off, to grow faster than the population uh, growth, to grow faster than our peers, to ensure that we attract investment into the economy, seems to be lacking. And again, it all comes down to government, government, government. Uh, if by August of 2018, uh, we've not figured out the national budget uh, in a country where the government is a major spender, um, even after the approval of the budget, you and I know it takes about six weeks or so to be able to say, okay, all the procurement go through the system, the uh, release of funds and all of this stuff. It's more than that because even Easy. with what I know right now, sure. there's been no release of funds to any ministry. So, so and this is what showed up in the uh, second quarter GDP numbers when you saw the, uh, uh, the contraction. In some part, I'm not worried about uh, contraction across board. I mean, for example, the contraction in oil and gas is due primarily to production um, uh, numbers. That's not as worrying to me as contraction in some specific sectors that... Uh, like agriculture? Are, yes, agriculture is concerning, especially in the area of livestock and fishery. I mean, uh, and the crop production uh, side, they, there was a massive contraction from the growth that was witnessed uh, the previous quarter. So those are the numbers that concern me, and those numbers are invariably tied to... Uh, uh, the way the government spends and what the government focuses. If government departments are, are, are not giving funds to be able to carry out extension program, provision of fertilizers to farmers, they are not able to be ag uh, aggressively budget for uh, uh, intervention programs that, co that assist both uh, crop, fishery and uh, livestock farmers, then uh, you will get the numbers will be the numbers. I mean, In fact, sure. uh, uh, my team went out last week to in fact, we did money line with Nancy on the streets on Friday. Mm -hmm. And why I said we should do that was to calibrate what the people are actually thinking about. It's not all the time we should be in the studio. So we had the people's perspective. And they spoke to a farmer. And the farmer did say it's not just about fertilizers, fertilizers. Mm -hmm. It should also be about equipment to assist Absolutely. the farmers. And I think he, yeah, he was and right. And, and those things are tied to the, For example, I know there was a provision made for this uh, National uh, Agricultural Mechanization Limited NAMEL program with John Deere. With the Ministry yes. of Agriculture, but, but that it's, it's in the budget. But yeah, it's not. There's it's no not way you can release. In fact, if you do not, also if you don't exactly. If you don't sign off the budget, but then the rainy season is over. You and I, we are looking at in Abuja. We are we are enjoying the rains in Abuja. But I can promise you, in the next 60 days, the rain is gone. So if you had not been the larger part of the of the se rainy season, the budget was sitting down in the National Assembly. So these are the issues that we keep when we keep hammering this issue of budget, budget, budget. The rainy season, we, we're still largely uh, a rainy season based agricultural economy. I mean, irrigation is still not uh, sufficient in Nigeria. So your release of funds has to uh, respect that uh, <laughs> nature. The force of nature is not going to wait for you. You said that the economy is quite resilient. Yes. Why did you say that? I mean, for an economy that has not received uh, the, the help that it needs, and it's still growing. To me, it shows that the Nigerian people, I mean, the ordinary Nigerian is doing his own bit. I mean, we continue to go to the farm. We continue to farm without this assistance. We continue to do our manufacturing, even with epileptic power. We continue to, uh, uh, the, the businessman continues to figure his way out of the economy. And that, to me, I mean, Nigerians, uh, Nigeria, our, the second, our second name, our middle name, if American talks, Americans talk about uh, being bold and, uh, and, and being brave, and Nigeria is, uh, we are resilient, we are resilient mm -hmm. people. And the economy has demonstrated that. I mean, even in the absence of much stimulus from the, uh, from the government side, and we never got any much stimulus from the monetary side, even though it's been talked about, um, the Nigerian economy has continued to demonstrate that it can still grow, even though it's marginally as much as it can, and okay. that's, that's good news. Okay, let me take it from that perspective, actually, yes. that perhaps we're seeing that because of the resilience of the people, mm -hmm. as it were, if you take a look at even the creative industry sure. or the entertainment industry, it sure. has grown without... Despite government help. Other people would also say government should take its hands away from creative sector and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Let them just go on their own trajectory, but that has to be debated. Now let's take a look at the PIGB that has also been raising the bait. The mm -hmm. president has refused to sign. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as an analyst in that sector, 
what what were your what were your initial reactions when you saw that? Yeah, yeah, my this is something that has been on for a very long time. Of course. Investors were actually waiting for this to make an investment. We've lost trillions of naira as a result of the PIGB not being signed in terms of people are sitting on the fence to see what will happen. Yes, so, so uh, of course, everybody will say um, they were surprised. But um, the, uh, the fact that it was not signed immediately already should have set off alarm bells to folks who have been watching the industry. And if you remember when I talked about the PIGB, the PIGB is only a part of the PIB, right? Um, and when I talked about it on this show, I mentioned that there were some elements. And I, I pointed out, if you remember that show, I, I, was, I pointed out legislative languages that were wrong in that bill. If you, I think um, I actually listed out the specific things that needed to be changed. And I'm not surprised. So it came back, and the president says, you need to change those languages. I, I, I'm totally not surprised. I'm not surprised on my side, because the moment I had this issue, I said, look, this line, this line, there were serious errors, serious contradictions that could have implication on the, on the, on the wallet of the government. I think that what should, it, should not, it should be seen as a normal exercise in the process of democracy. If we have a functional democracy, what the president has done is not a rejection. He, he didn't veto the bill. What he sent it out back for these things to be fixed. But, but what is the cost analysis to all this time wasting? Uh, well and all of that. You know this has been on for a very yeah, long time, even I from Jonathan administration till now. There's a, there's a cost to it, and the, the cost to it, um, um, unfortunately for us, is the lack of investment in that sector. Um, I personally believe that what should have happened in the first place was that this bill should always have been an executive bill, not a legislative bill. Because when you are expecting a particular sector of the economy to be reformed, as important as the bread and butter of the country, then the executive has to have been involved from day one, dissecting that bill, determining the language of that bill, so that when it comes to them, it's not a surprise. But personally, um, it's an exercise in democracy. I mean, I do not expect that the president will be a rubber stamp. I expected that that bill should have been dealt with quickly. Those languages I pointed out on your show here in public and said, these are issues. And then there's the other issue that, um, Interestingly, I did the research after the president pointed out that this could be an issue, the issue of the transitive elements, the elements that, okay, you could likely be heading into, if you sign the PIGB as it is, without a transitive language that says this bill is waiting on the physical bill. Just It's a simple language, just one line or two lines to say that you are not going to implement the fiscal part of PIGB until the uh, uh, National Assembly passes the fiscal bill itself then if you don't have that transitive language, you could be losing up to 40%, 50% of your revenue allocation month to month. Because, for example, if you tell the government to go ahead and implement 40% ownership of uh, uh, the National Petroleum uh, Corporation and uh, privatize it, that means that 40% of allocation every month to month will now be given to the private sector investors. Where will, you, where will the states fund their uh, education? Yeah, where will they fund budget. their... So these things are is legislative language. And I pointed out to these holes, even while this bill was, I believe when I was talking about this on the show, the bill was actually still in conference. And I was hoping that the conference will actually fix these languages. But nothing really happened in the conference. The conference basically sat as almost like a rubber stamp, and they moved the bill to the president. The legislature itself, we pay them quite, and I keep saying it, sometimes people think, same, think I'm hard on them. We pay them quite a bit of money to do their job. I expect that they, do, they should do their job well. And again, I think it was a wrong strategy to make this a legislative bill. It should have been an executive bill that will have gone to the legislature so that way these issues of all oh, languages and all of those things that will have been resolved up front. And so we'll avoid all these delays. What we can do now is that the National Assembly should sit and they should fix these languages so that the president can sign the bill. I don't think the... the unfortunately, I think there was some uh, level of poor journalism uh, up front when some people were saying the president was not signing it because, because he's it's going it's to whittled down his power. To so me, I think that was... I, when I read it, um, as somebody who observes the media very well, I, I knew it was nonsense up front because no president will actually state that in, in, a, in a letter to the National Assembly, knowing the reason why the bill came about in the first place. So, But the other, the other side of this issue is that the issues that the president has pointed out But you know those have also been issues even when Desani Ali Simaduke was there in terms of try to whittle down the minister the powers powers of the minister of petroleum we, whosoever he is we don't need, or she is and I always keep saying it, we don't regulate water water that we have in front of what is more expensive than uh, petroleum and is even more required by human beings and animals and all of us that exist in this world than petroleum we don't regulate it we don't need minister of water resources to set the price of water why should we have the minister with all these draconian powers so I don't I don't to me is a is a no-brainer and I don't think the I, I think 
from the communication the president sent to the National Assembly, if we are allowed to now see the, even the original copy, I hope it is released, um, it should not be an issue of power or who has, keeps what power on, or, or the other power. The most important issue, issues are we need to fix this legislative language. We need to include transitive elements such, such that we don't have a shock in the system. We don't go from a month of um, having 700, 800 billion being shared by the states and federal government to a month where you suddenly share 400 billion and all the teachers and all the civil servants are up in arms because they don't have enough money to finance the system. So we need to make sure that the transitive elements are already are well in place and that we, we have a, a roadmap to how states will transition from an era where we finance our budget month to month based on oil to one where we finance our budget month to month based on dividends, royalties, as well as taxes. Hmm. So those are the main issues for you, right? Those now. are the main issues. For and that, th that, those are the way out for you, right? Yeah, it, it's way out. And uh, it, we should have a functional democracy. I and mean, everybody keeps throwing this all on the executive alone. It's functional democracy means that uh, both the three arms of government should work together collaboratively to solve issues. This particular issue is not a big deal. Uh, the executive and the uh, legislature agrees on it. But it's seeming like a big deal because it's been there for years. Yeah, so in this case, they've pointed out specific three things. What I expect, instead of uh, us going to town, because even the legislature knows that these issues, these, these um, uh, languages that I've pointed out, I, again, I will repeat, I pointed at those, even while it was in conference, if they can fix that in two to three weeks, they can pass the bill again and the president will assent to it. And just carry the executive along as you're doing it. It's two, three weeks. You can sit. Uh, I mean, the same legislature seems to be able to get things done when they want to. So I don't think it's an issue. What do you think will be uh, the impact of the sitting on the fence of investors right now in the old sector? Uh, the, the impact is what you continue to see. That, for example, the um, oil and gas se sector uh, witnessed um, a reduction in production. Um, in this last quarter. Some of it is due to uh, pipeline leakages and breakages, but mostly leakages as a result of lack of maintenance and investment in that sector. So it's a sector and is a reason why it's also smart for Nigeria that at this time when we've been able to get, I think we've reached the ceiling of production in the, in the oil and gas sector based on our prior investment, which was done in the 70s and 80s, it's also a good time for Nigeria to start exiting the sector. That's Nigerian people, that's the Nigerian government, which is the reason why the PIGB is a good bill as it is envisioned in terms of divesting the federal government of ownership of this uh, uh, of these assets what, 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 where, do, where does NMPC come into all of this because we do know from this now it won't be NMPC anymore you know where does NMPC come into this with all the hula balu around NMPC now in the last few weeks well I think NNPC itself is preparing itself I think mentally I saw the, the GMD talking about the fact that he hopes there will be no job losses and uh, as the organization itself is split into two MPMC and NAPMC um, and NPC and NAPMC and also of course um, as they take away the small separation between what uh, DPR currently does and it's almost as if DPR is inside an NPC today and there will be a lot more separation when you have the Petroleum Commission. Um, I think um, NMPC um, has to be ready, it needs to be in a reform mode. I mean, we need a reformer in, in there to, to, to be able to implement whatever will come out of the PIGB or the PIB, whichever way it comes out. Um, the organization itself is solely in need of reforms, as I have always stated. Um, and if we do not reform it, if any Nigeria does not reform NMPC, NMPC will kill Nigeria. I keep saying it. The role of Mr. President as the Minister of Finance, what has it brought to to the sector. Oh, Minister of Petroleum. Yeah, mean. Minister of Petroleum, I, I beg your pardon. Minister of Petroleum, has it? Uh, it's to be honest with you, if you're going to reform... It's just like... Yeah, he, w he wants to have final say. I think that's the whole idea about him being Minister of Petroleum. Um, unfortunately, I was hoping that two to three years in down the road would we'll have done the necessary reforms. Because if you really... The way the civil service work, and I know you, if you deal with them any day, if you want to carry that kind of important reform, and the president is not the minister of petroleum, it's going to be difficult. I, I can tell you that. He's going to walk through the office of um, permanent secretary, walk through the GMD, go there. The bureaucracy. And he'll, he'll, yes. So I think if that was the reason why he kept the position, we are more or less defeating that reason now if we do not implement the reforms. So that's why I'm saying that it's necessary. I think they can take four weeks, go back, finish this work, legislative language clean up, come back to the president and make sure that we can at least achieve this reform in the next uh, six to eight months. I want to say many thanks for joining us, thanks Michael, yeah. for uh, your insights this morning. All right, that's the much you can take on today's edition of the program. I've been speaking with Michael Oluwagbemi, who is a partner, isn't it? Executive partner at Winnovation, not chief executive officer. 
It's too, that title is too, it's too big. For <laughs> it's too big. <laughs> Nigerian <laughs> titles. All right, that's the much we have for you on today's edition of the show. Many thanks for joining us. Please join us again tomorrow. God willing, be the best you can be and be the change that you want to see. I am Nancy Nadia.